How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing how to make cross seams in carpet. So we got a full piece here in our bedroom and it's just a little bit narrow for the room. 12 foot, don't quite get it. So we got to add about a foot onto the side of the room in order to make our carpet wide enough for the room. So we've got three pieces of carpet here that we have to make for our fill piece. So we got to connect all three of these together to make one solid piece to put it on the side of the room. That's called a fill piece. Um, we're going to run through that really fast and show you guys how I get the best results on doing that, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get, I've got all my pieces laying the same way. So all my nap is laying down that way on all four of my pieces. I'm going to go ahead and row cut this side of this piece and all of these sides on my fill pieces here and get that over with and out of the way. Okay, so we got all of our pieces row cut and ready to seam up. Now what I want to do is this one here and this one here, since they're going to be joined on to the next piece, I want to go ahead and straight edge this one and this one. And I'll explain why those particular two in just a moment. Okay, so we got this piece and this piece is now straight edged. So what I want to do is go ahead and pull uh, all three of my pieces over just like they're going to be lined up. And what I want to do is overlap the piece that I cut. I want it to overlap the piece that's not cut just a little bit so I can use this for reference to make my next cut on the piece that is not cut, okay? I want to do the exact same thing with this piece that is cut. I want it to overlap just a little bit onto the piece that's not cut. Now, a while ago, I said I would show you exactly why I chose these two pieces to cut first. That's because the nap on this carpet is laying down this direction. So what I want to do is pull the nap of this carpet back. You can see that it's laying down that way. So I want to pull it back so it's not in my way and I don't have to worry about cutting it. And I'm going to leave just a little just a little mark in this bottom piece that's not cut yet, okay? I'm gonna do that on both sides. And if this carpet was actually wider, if I was doing a four, four foot fill piece or something, I would probably put three in it. But since I'm only doing about a foot and a half here, two marks is gonna be sufficient enough, okay? Now, the reason why I did this piece first, you can notice the nap, again, is laying down that direction. If I overlapped this one and this one was already straight edged, whenever I cut that, I'm actually going to cut, if I use this straight edge piece here to make my mark just like I did here, I would actually cut these fibers here and I would have little nicks in my seam because these fibers are laying this way. And because those fibers are laying that way, whenever I make my cut here, it's only going to cut straight down and anything that gets cut is going to be getting cut off versus getting left on my fill piece here. I hope that makes some sense. That's a little hard to explain, I guess. All right. I'm going to do the same thing on my next piece right here and then we'll flip them over and straight edge them. The main thing whenever you're doing this, you're marking your next piece here. Both of these pieces have to be pulled up tightly to our main piece here. If we have one that's a little crooked and you mark it here and there, you're going to be off whenever you straight edge it. So definitely want these seams here lined up properly and then you're not going to have any issue whenever you make your marks and cut your piece. It'll fall together perfectly. 
even though this piece may not be straight edged correctly, this piece, or not correctly, even though this piece is not straight edged straight, it might be at a diagonal a little bit, this piece is going to match the perfect diagonal because I'm marking this piece here from this piece here, so it's going to be good no matter what. We got these pieces marked now, this one and this one. So again, we're going to fold it straight over and do our straight edge just like we did a while ago. Now, because we put our marks in that, we want to make our mark visible here, our little notch cut that we put in it with our carpet knife. And we're going to place our straight edge right against our mark right there and make our cuts. Before I go any further, I have everything completely cut and ready to go now. Now I want to seal all my edges on my, that's going to be seamed together. And I like to use the thermoplastic. You can either use thermoplastic or a latex. Thermoplastic is just my choice, my preference. Um, I, I try to keep these cool glide sticks. Uh, they are a lower temperature melting, meaning they don't have to get as hot to melt. So they tend to do a little better in my opinion. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and seal all these edges up again that is got to be seamed together. If you're curious what I'm doing right now, I actually have different videos on seam sealing methods and such. I will leave a link or a card in the video for that video or videos. If you go to my carpet seaming playlist. I'm sure that you can find plenty of them there referencing seam sealing and the effects of it. This thermoplastic again is definitely my choice. I really like the way that it sticks the back of the carpet together from top to bottom of the backing. All right. Okay. Now, these are all sealed and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and cut my tape and stick these two pieces together first. It is important that we do these short seams first, okay? You don't want to connect all three of these pieces to this. I do see some people do that. I don't like to do that myself because once you stick these pieces together here, if you have a tiny gap here, there's nothing you can do about it because it's already stuck. So the way I have all these marked out and cut, just whenever I place these together and get my seam edge right here lined up nicely and seam these together, it's automatically going to fit up next to this one nicely, okay? It has no other choice because I marked it out like I did, okay? One important thing about placing the tape on your cross seam is you always want your tape to be approximately an inch and a half over from the edge of your carpet seam here. That way, whenever you seam this piece onto this piece, you don't have tape overlapped right here where you join them together. This is going to be about the thickness of your backing on your carpet, so if you overlap these, it's going to look like you've got your backing overlapped and one side is going to be a little higher than the other. So I will always place my carpet, place my seam tape about an inch, inch and a half back that way. This amount right here is about what I want whenever I start my, uh, start my seam tape. Again, that way whenever I put this tape down, it's not overlapped like it would be if I went all the way to the edge. So about an inch and a half. This is a three inch tape, so I want about half of that distance right here on the side. Okay. Got our tape and everything positioned properly. We're going to go ahead and burn this seam together. I am using the uh, Taylor 890 iron is my iron of choice. 
Um, I can leave a link to that in the description as well. This is a super, super nice hot melt iron. And I'm using the Seamer Down Now Pro Series, which is also a really great tool for making your seams, okay? The main thing when starting off your cross seam here is, again, have your tape about an inch and a half from the edge of your seam. And when you place it together, like right now, these edges have to be perfect, okay? So that, wants, that needs to be your main focus when you're starting out your head seam. And right there, looks good. Pull them together, roll them down. <laughs> because I use the seamer down now, it only takes 20 seconds and I can actually move that off of there. My seam is not going to be bothered at all if I pick it up, flip it over, do whatever. 20 seconds is all it takes for your seam to be cool and stretch, do anything you need to do from using this tool right here, okay? By the way, that's not the only advantage of this. There's so many advantages to that, it's unbelievable. I want to point out here on the back, you can see I've got about an inch of space right there, okay? That's exactly what we want whenever we're putting our cross seams together, okay? We're gonna go ahead and do our next seam. I'm gonna get you in really nice and close on this one. Again, I just wanna let you get really up close on this one here so you can see all of my finger movement and exactly what I'm doing and such on this. This is one of the great things about this iron I was talking about right here is the fin on it. And the light allows you to see really good. Again, main thing is whenever you get your seam going, this edge right here has to be absolutely perfect when you start out. If it's not, you're going to be problems. Want to get a little bit loud here. I might just uh, not use this seamer down now on this one just so that you can see me better without having all the noise and I can kind of talk as I'm doing this so that's a little bit tight right there. It's already touching and I don't have it together yet so give that just a little pull apart. Make sure it's good as I put it together and then what I do once I got my two pieces of backing together, I want to rub it, pull them in until I see it start to peak. Then I know my backings are together good. I'm holding it right here. I'm holding it together so as I'm doing my movement, uh, rolling it and all that stuff, I don't pull it apart, okay? Again, I want to Pull it apart just a little bit where it's a little tight. Place them together. And feel of it feels good. I'm going to pull it right together there until it starts to peak. Give it a little rub. Again, I know that it's together because it's starting to peak right there. Give it a little rub. Run my tractor over it. Or not tractor. I always use a Use a smooth roller on this. Okay, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cool it with the seamer down now. So we got all three of our pieces put together now to make one long fill piece, as you can see here. Now, again, because the way I did mark it, this is going to butt right up next to this long piece. Just perfect, okay? So it's going to be nice and tight everywhere and not have any gaps or bows in it or anything like that, okay? With that being said, now the only thing we have to do, I want to point out here again, we left our space right there. Now the only thing that we have to do is join these two pieces together. We'll go ahead and do that real fast and be done. 
By the way, if anybody's interested in any FBSB swag, you can check out my store directly below my videos, okay? Got all kinds of apparel, shirts, hats, and stuff like coffee mugs and such like that, okay? Pretty wide variety of things down there if you're interested in any swag. This one, it don't matter, and I want to show right quick um, because our tape is halfway over there, that's why we stop our tape on this one, okay? Now we don't have overlapped tape. This iron right here is definitely awesome on long seams like this. As it goes down through there, it pretty much puts the seam together for you because of this little fin right here. Um, I don't know if you can tell or not from the video, but I am actually running my iron against the grain. A lot of people will say, don't do that. If you don't take your weight and drag it behind your iron and push the nap over the opposite way, you're going to be fine doing that, okay? All this stuff is put together with heat, all the carpet and stuff like that. So it's definitely a bad idea if you drag your weight. If you pick it up and set it directly down where the nap, see the nap is laying down that direction. If you place your weight or your seamer down now on it with your weight, with your fibers laying down the right way, you're not going to have an issue. Now, again, if I was to take my weight and drag it forward and reverse these naps, see that? you would definitely have a problem with your seam looking fuzzy. Okay, as you can see, we was going against the grain, if you will and everything is nice and flat. We don't have any distortion. We don't have anything standing up like that or anything like that. That's simply because I picked my weight up and set it down rather than dragging it like that, okay? It's actually a good thing if you're going with the grain that you do drag your weight. It's going to be a good thing, but in this instance, and it does happen quite often, whenever you're working real life on the job, you'll get in situations where you have to run it that way or you're going to be working on a tiny little bitty fill piece or something like that and just make everything uncomfortable and awkward to work. So uh, let's go ahead. I want to show again right here on the back of these seams where I joined my head seam here and my head seam here. The tape, well if I can, actually stops way before my seam here. So right here is actually the end of my tape. Let's see here. Maybe I can pull this apart. There we go. So I wanted to show you guys this. So here's the end of my tape for my cross seam, which my seam is way over here. So that's not going to be, it's right about on the edge of this tape here. And that's exactly what we want. Okay. So that's the purpose of that so that it's not overlapped right here where my seam is. Okay. Okay. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, again, we took our three pieces, put together into one then joined it on the big piece. So we have a nice big piece of carpet here to do our room with. Now, um, if you'll follow these instructions I give here in this video, you're not going to have any issues with your head seams or cross seams, uh, whichever you like to call them there. Uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Always be kind one to another. FBSB's out. Bird on a tree I'm just sitting